welcome to the tale of the three billy goat scruff, adapted by Alfie James and performed by members of the Women Unseen Theatre Project. All down by the river live the billy goat scruff. The wool on their bodies is just like fluff. One was a wee babe, soft, little and sweet. She spoke with a tiny voice, with four paws, fragile and meek. The second was slender, sporting a beautiful shiny coat. Rather intelligent, she spoke with a posh voice. Funny considering she was just a goat. The third was strong and a bit tough. He was certainly a billy goat's gruff, with stubbly short hair. His voice was deep and rather rough. There was a grumpy old troll who likes to huff and puff, lived under the bridge by the billy goat's gruff. This grumpy old troll wore fluffy pink earmuffs, as he didn't like the sound of the three billy goat's gruff. He hears their hooves and sniffs and scoffs, then he would blow aloud, would you goats politely bog off? Our story starts here by the old wooden bridge. The bridge ran across the river between two huge fields. One was covered with a thick layer of juicy green grass, whereas the other was not. The grass had been chewed and was all gobbled up. The three billy goats graph stood admiring the other side, where they thought that the grass was much greener. They were sweet and pleasant creatures. Poppycock! What? Wait. No, you can't interrupt the story. Like heck were they pleasant? They were noisy and greedy. That's not how the story goes, though. Who says? This is a nation, an old fairy tale, which has been told through countless generations. Grandparents to parents, parents to children. Doesn't mean they got the story right, though, does it? I'm sure that they did. How do you know? Were you there when it all happened? No, I was. You're ruining the story. Now get off stage until it's your part. Oh, it's so unfair. Why do I always have to be the bad guy? If you only knew what a nuisance it was living under that bridge with those annoying goats graph. Shh! Now off stage, exit stage right. I suppose we're going to have the same old ending too, are we? Are you still here? It's so demoralizing. It does nothing for my street credibility. I'm calling the producer. All right, all right. I'm going. I'm going. But just so you know, I think this is a real defamation of character. And I oppose to the idea of adding fuel to stereotypes. Not all trolls are... Get off stage! Now, as I was saying, the three Billy Goats graph lived in a field by a bridge. There was little Billy Goat. Oh, that's me. My name's Little Bo. Do you like my new pink scarf? I got it this morning. Middle-sized Billy Goat. My name is Beatrice, and don't try to shorten it to be either. I simply despise it when one does that. It's so tacky, don't you think? And then finally, there was... Red! That's my name. Simple as, so no getting it wrong. You can't confuse Fred. Fred is who I am. Simple as. Fred's my name. Nothing else. Nothing more. Got it? Why are you wearing those boxing gloves? Because I'm Fred. Because I'm tough. Got it? Oh, please. Norma, don't. He's just a heavy lump. A silly old goat. What did you say? She just said, indeed, you're very tough. Brave too. 
I also said that it's a pity that you don't have a single brain cell between you all. Norma! Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit also lived in the same fields. And we're slowly starving to death, too. Please don't say another word, dear. Well, one of us has to say something. They've been eating everything and not leaving a single bite for anyone else. You're not the only ones which live here, you know. Please excuse my dear wife. She hasn't taken her medication today. Indeed, the Billy Gold's graph were rather greedy. They love to eat sweet grass. Carrots, too. In fact, they eat everything. Ew! What is that wretched creature making all that noise? I'm getting a migraine. Sadly, the field where they now lived was now brown and barren. Because they've eaten it all. I'm going to flatten that rabbit. No, I'd like to see you try. Oh, God. Heaven help me. But the goats were still hungry. I have an idea. There's a rather beautiful patch of grass in the field just across the bridge over there. Oh, it's a glass clean and juicy. Yes, it is. And plenty of sunlight to give me the correct dosage of vitamin D each day. Plastic doll. I believe there is. The grass is green. The grass is scrummy. The grass tastes great. The grass tastes yummy. The grass is tall. The grass is juicy. The grass tastes rich. The grass tastes fruity. Rich, fruity, oh, that does sound simply divine. And is the field big? field is huge. The field is wide. You can run for miles from side to side. There are trees scattered about to shade you from the sun. A fresh river to drink from and splash about and have some fun. One does not splash about in the river. I do. Sounds all right to me. But there is one small snack in this beautiful idea of yours. And what's that? The troll. A troll? I ain't afraid of no troll. Everyone's afraid of this troll, though. Let me at him. I'll soon box its ears. And before I could warn them any more, they were off. Gone with a flash. Good riddance. I see. One of these days, Norma. You're going to get us into a pie. Nonsense. You've just had your whiskers burnt after that episode with that owl. It nearly ate me alive. Nonsense. It was miles away. And the story left the two rabbits arguing. Instead, it followed the three Billy Gold's graph as they ran towards the old wooden bridge, which would take them to the other field. Be wary of the loathsome troll that slyly lies in wait to drag you to his dingy hole and put you on his plate. His blood is black and boiling hot. He gargles ghastly groans. He'll cook you in the dinner pot, your skin, your flesh, your bones. He'll clutch your arms and catch your legs and grind you to a pulp, then swallow you like scrambled eggs. Gobble, gobble, gulp. So watch your step, the next you go, upon a pleasant stroll. But you may end up in the pit below, a supper for the troll. <laughs>
We all know that trolls can't be trusted. Now clear off and let me continue with the story. Very well then. The little billy goat was the first to reach the bridge. Gingerly, he put one hoof and then another into the bridge. Oh, this is easy. I put one foot onto the bridge ever so quietly, then the other, and I started to tiptoe across. But because it was so rickety, however hard she tried, the hoof still went trip trap, trip trap on the wooden planks. Trip trap, trip trap, trippity trap. Suddenly, there was a huge roar. Such an exaggeration. Just play along with it. <coughs> oh, very well then. <coughs> Rawr! Better? Oh, it scared me. Oh, I think a little bit of wee just came out. <coughs> Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? And out from under the bridge loomed the troll. But I wasn't scared. Yes, you were. I was. You were quaking in your hoofs, but little Billy Gold Graf managed to squeak. It's only me. I'm only going to look for some grass to eat. Oh, no, you're not. I'm going to eat you for my breakfast, lunch and tea. Oh no, I'm just a little billy goat gruff. Why don't you wait for my sister? She's bigger than me and much tastier. She even has much smoother coat and sparkling hooves. Oh really? Is that so? But please, let me cross the bridge to the other side. I promise I won't make much noise. So the greedy troll decided to wait and little billy goat gruff skipped over the bridge and began to eat the fresh green grass on the other side. Another goat saw little Billy Goat Gruff eating the fresh green grass and were jealous because they wanted some too. Look at her! She's already over there in the other field. That's because she's much faster than us. That grass does look green and rich. Simply the juiciest, the best flavoured and most expensive grass fields I've ever seen. And they were right. It was the best. It wasn't any normal grass. It was M&S grass. Really? Not that joke. Again? My bad. I love it. What are you waiting for? Come on, Fred. And Beatrice was off, out of sight, leaving Fred, whose legs were beginning to become a little slow and old. But don't tell him that I said that. I heard that! So middle-sized Billy Goldgraf went down to the bridge and began to cross the stream. This is easy. I put one foot onto the bridge ever so quietly, then the other. I started to tiptoe across. But because it was so rickety, However hard she tried, her loofs still went trip trap, trip trap on the wooden planks. Trip trap, trip trap, trippity trap. Trip trap, trip trap, trippity trap. Suddenly there was a huge roar and the troll was looming under the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? Quoking in her hoofs, middle sized Billy Gold Graf managed to say in his poshest voice. I say, who said that? I did. Who did? I did. Don't you know it's rude to shout and roar? You're my bridge. I demand that you show yourself at once. You're going to taste good in a pie. I'll call it a rich goat delight. Just then the troll leapt out from under the bridge. His blood is black and boiling hot. He gurgles ghastly groans. He'll cook you in his dinner pot. Your skin, your flesh, your bones. Oh gosh, you're repulsive. I'm a troll. What did you expect? A dashing prince? You smell dreadful. 
you need a wash and a shave at least, maybe some mouthwash and aftershave. Aren't you scared of me? I'm scared of your dress sense. You've got some serious colour clashing going on there. And those boots, they're hardly retro. Second-hand clothes were so yesterday, darling. And they say that I'm the villain in this story? Do you actually have a bird's nest growing inside your hair? You're so rude. I'm actually going to enjoy eating you. Eat me? Oh, how would that be bright? Think about this, dear. If you eat me, then you wouldn't have enough space for a far bigger and better meal. What's that? Come closer and I'll whisper it into your ear. Okay. Not that close. You do rather smell nasty. Where's your ear? Under my hair. Ooh. Well? I don't want to seem to be telling you what to do, but if I were you, Mr. Troll, you wouldn't want to eat me. I'm not big enough to fill you up. Wait until my brother comes along. He's much tastier than me. Bigger? Tastier? Indeed. You should, you should see his biceps and you'll be feasting off the meat on his legs for weeks. He'll be the biggest feast you've ever had. A banquet even, maybe. Okay, let's not overdo it. He might get suspicious. Very well, then. So I can cross the bridge to the other side. I love what you've done with the trees scattered about the place. Mm. That little raspberry bush by the other side of the bridge looks lovely. Very well. So the middle-sized Billy Gold Graf scampered over the bridge and began to eat the sweet green grass with little Billy Gold Graf. Boats, Billy got gruff Fred was so jealous and couldn't wait to get across the bridge and join his sisters. I can't wait to start munching on that grass ahead. That grass sure looks green. That grass sure looks scrummy. I bet that grass tastes great. I bet that grass tastes yummy. That grass sure looks tall. That grass sure looks juicy. I bet that grass looks, tastes rich, and I bet that grass tastes fruity. As he finally approached the bridge, he could hardly wait. His tummy grumbled, his tummy gurgled. He put his hooves onto the bridge. Trip, trip, trip. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trippity trap. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trippity trap. Once again, suddenly the troll loomed out from under the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? I boomed. It's me, Big Billy Goat Scruff Fred. Who do you think you are? I'm the troll, and I'm going to eat you for breakfast, lunch, and tea. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. The troll jumped onto the bridge in front of Fred and startled him slightly. All right, I'm not that ugly. On the contrary, I quite liked your jacket. Really? I got it from a charity shop in town. Needed a bit of sewing and patching done to it, but... Uh... Excuse me? Sorry? Sorry. The troll suddenly started stamping his feet and then kicking them onto the ground. Dust started to fill the air behind him. He jumped forward into the air and began to race towards the big Billy Goat Gruff. Just then, Fred bent his head and bravely charged at the troll. I'm going to knock you off this bridge and eat you for my breakfast, lunch and dinner. Not a man, Nelly! The biggest Billy Goat Gruff picked him up in his horns and tossed him into the stream below. Ah! Splash! The troll disappeared under the rushing water, never to be seen again. From then on, anyone could cross the bridge and enjoy the sweet green grass with the three Billy Gold's graph. Actually, they didn't share it with us. 
They've built a fence on the other side too. And I did come back too. I've been listening to their noise from their parties for years. Even these pink earphones don't work anymore. We're not that bad. Yes, you are. But the story can't end just like that. What can we do? I've got an idea. Come a little closer and I'll whisper it into your ear. Oh, do I have to? A little closer. Troll explained his idea to the storyteller. Suddenly, she leapt up with joy. Of course. Let us return to the beginning of the story where it was said that the three Billy Gold's craft were rather greedy animals. They ate everything in the old field and not leaving a single bite for anyone else. Turning, turning the fields brown and barren. And do you think that they learn really their lesson? Especially as they've gotten their way by pushing me into the river. I did say that I liked your jacket though. Indeed, they were pretty selfish and greedy creatures. And we all know that it never pays to be selfish and greedy. Without the three billy goats graph, our field grew once again. Soon, it was even better than how the other field was. Whereas the field where the goats had gone to had now become the opposite. And the goats had become very fat indeed. Exactly. So when they tried to force their way back again, they came char charging across the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, trippity trap. Trip trap, trip trap, trippity trap. And because they were so heavy and the bridge was old and rickety, the bridge couldn't hold their weight and it gave way before they could reach the other side. Splash! They hit the water. And the river took them away. For it never pays to be greedy and selfish. And this is where our story ends. And I wasn't the villain after all. They all lived happily ever after. <music> all down by the river live the billy goats gruff. The wool on their bodies is just like fluff. One was a wee babe, soft little and sweet. She spoke with a tiny voice, with four paws, fragile and meek. The second was slender, sporting a beautiful shiny coat. Rather intelligent, she spoke with a posh voice. Funny considering she was just a goat. The third was strong and a bit tough. He was certainly a billy goat's gruff, with stubbly short hair, his voice was deep and rather rough. There was a grumpy old troll who likes to huff and puff, lived under the bridge by the billy goat's gruff. This grumpy old troll wore fluffy pink earmuffs, as he didn't like the sound of the three billy goat's gruff. He hears their hooves and sniffs and scoffs. Then he would blow aloud. Would you goats politely bug off? Mm -hmm.